Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Alberon here again, and it's time for Let's Learn Asuka, and this is gonna be... Well, it's definitely a character that we definitely need to let's learn, and I'm probably gonna need to let's learn a couple of times, but hey, it's day two, we're gonna go over the character's buttons, combo routes, a little bit about their special moves and stuff, not a super in-depth guide about what each an individual spell does, because I've got a different video for that, and this would just be way too long if we did that, we're going to talk about how we go for combo routes and how we use our specials and our meters and stuff like that and just the general game plans and then we're going to take that knowledge that we've learned and try them out online together. And first, we're actually going to check out his frame data because I'm actually not too sure of that yet. I have a feel from when I've been pressing things but I haven't actually checked. Okay cool, Dustloop has all of his buttons already. Wow, they hit. People over at Dustloop are the real heroes of the FTC, putting all this data and stuff for everyone to see is just super legendary of them. So 6 frame 5p minus 2, okay that's fine. Um, 5k is a super awesome button. Let's just quickly go over the frame data and not spend too long talking here so we can actually get back into the game. Um, only slightly slower and it's still minus 3. So this is a button that has a really good hitbox and yeah, it actually doesn't have bad recovery. So I might use that even more than I already have been. Especially when you can cancel it into your 2D or even your 6H for an overhead or whatever. That's pretty cool. Close slash, 7 frames. Oh, it's actually plus on block. I didn't expect that. Fast slash, 11 frames, minus 6. And it has decent frames, but for 11 frame startup, it's like nah, kind of average. 5H though is pretty giant. It's like RAM level 5H. 15 frames, minus 13. So you definitely want to cancel it. 5D. Yeah, it's a 5D, it has pretty decent range. 2P is 5, five frames. Hmm, the characters usually have 4 frames, or is that just Street Fighter 6? And I'm used to that now. Minus 2, yeah, whatever. 2K is also 6 frames, minus 3. Yeah, pretty similar to his 5K, but just hits low and is a little bit shorter reaching. 2S, 12 frames, minus 7. That's really not that great, especially considering how not great its range is. Because it's just like this curvy sword that doesn't really go that far in front of him. So you really want to use fast slash more because it's a tiny bit faster and reaches further. But then you get 6p to ton and then you're like, okay, well I guess I have to go for 2s. 2h is a cool spinning move. 14 frame startup. Oh, it's only actually minus 3 on block. That's pretty good because sometimes I would go for this on block kind of just an, in anticipation for a combo because it's really good for combos but then accidentally not cancel it. But knowing that it's minus three, it wasn't actually that bad. I was very safe in those situations. The 2D is a really awesome 2D. It's like a projectile long reaching further than Giovanna's 2D and it's super fast. 12 frames, it's only minus nine. And from some of the distances you're throwing this thing at, it's safe. It's pretty crazy. And especially considering you can cancel it as well. It's pretty awesome 2D, but 20 frames of recovery means that if you whiff it, like they jump over it or you're too far away, 20 frames is a long amount to, to stand there in with recovery. 6P, it has a decent hitbox. 11 frames startup, minus nine. Do they have the hitboxes for these things yet? Not yet. See, we can't see if it's as ridiculous as Testaments yet. Uh, 6K, which is like the brambles that come out. 14 frames, minus four as well, wow. So these things that I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to cancel after it, are actually really safe on their own. I can just cancel my like my 2k or my 2p or you know 5k or whatever into 6k and even if I don't cancel it into a cube because I'm like oh no what do I cancel it into uh, and I don't do anything it's actually not that bad it's pretty safe. 6h is a big walloping overhead very minus so make sure you do cancel this on block and yeah it's low we knew that. JP, JK, the fastest is JP I mean yeah that's pretty obvious and Jump Slash is actually a decent amount faster than Jump Heavy Slash and has a lot less recovery. It's only 30, 31 total frames and this is 46. I thought they were kind of similar total frames, but I suppose not. Maybe I should use a little bit more Jump S. And Jump D is a total of 41. Wow, so it's a less total frames than Jump H as well. Maybe I was using a little bit too much Jump H there. Whoops. Thanks Dust Loop for correcting that uh, bad habit of mine. I should use some more Jump D. It looks like it has a really interesting hitbox. It kind of reminds me of uh, Gold Lewis Jump D, but obviously not as ridiculous, but it has similar vibes. Especially because he has such a low jump. Then the throw, yeah, it's a throw. 
Now projectiles, I don't think we need to check the frame data for this. Because... Yeah, I don't know if they're all going to be different with different spells. Oda? Now let's look at the supers. How fast does this actually come out? Because I use... Yeah, okay, that's why. Six frames start up, and then I guess the plus one frame is for the projectile to actually hit the opponent. Which makes sense why I and a lot of other Asuka players have been using this kind of as a reversal, even though it is absolutely not invincible to any extent. It's just really fast. So if the opponent like does an instant air dash at you, or is kind of doing some pressure or just running at you with a big button or something, you can kind of just throw this out and push them away. And because it's obviously plus on very plus on hit, but it's also plus on block, you can use it as a way for charging up your mana or something, and because it's so fast, you can kind of throw it out in a lot of situations. You wouldn't just throw out other supers that are not invincible. And yeah, punch version is changed by spells and kicks doesn't, but you know, we'll get to that. And this is a total of 16 frames, which is pretty short, but not short enough for it to be... Some people were thinking this could be an interesting reversal where you just freeze time and you can see what your opponent is doing and punish them. Like if Giovanna goes for a her drill kick or something, I just react, go for this, pick some cards, and then 6p her. But I don't know. It seems like it'll be a little bit tight to use that uh, in that situation. So that was all the frame data. The things I was most surprised about is that some of these command normals, like 6k and... Um, 2H and stuff are actually really, really safe on block. But other than that, this frame data seems like average to slightly below average at best. But there's some some decent stuff in there. Nothing too horrible, I don't think. But of course, he's not going to have amazing frame data for the type of ridiculous character that he is. So let's go back into training mode and cover the stuff. So now that we've kind of already talked about the buttons, I guess we can go through it a little bit faster, but 5p and 2p are both decently fast, pretty average, slightly below average speed, but pretty good for their slightly extended range, I suppose. I don't think most characters can punch in this distance. Nothing crazy, but, you know, slightly better. Um, slash is actually plus on block, which I did not expect, close slash. So when I'm actually running in and doing these staggers, they are kind of legit, because I can go for this into 2k or something, and I actually have some plus frames there, which just obviously makes the staggers into, you know, 2h or that, or 2s, whatever, just more legit. So that's actually pretty cool. I wasn't expecting them to give them a plus unblock, close slash, far slash. As you can see, it's got Ramlethal-esque vibes, but certainly not Ramlethal distance. It's decently fast at 11 frames, like we just saw but nothing stellar in terms of reach or hitboxes. It can obviously be 6 speed and stuff. And then 2S as well actually kind of has similar range. So um, I thought it was actually slightly less, but it looks like they're actually practically the exact same from this distance that I'm using it. So yeah, I guess you should go for a bit more of 2S because then you can't be 6 speed. But Usually if you're getting a combo and you're doing something like, I don't know, it's going to be easier to just do a micro dash in into your fast slash rather than dashing in and going for a 2s or something. So fast slash into heavy slash is gonna, still going to be your default. Um, please, I want a combo tool. So yeah, 2s, decently fast. Um, actually, decently not fast. It was like three or four frames slower than our fast slash. So if you don't want to be 6 speed, just know that it is, does mean that you're going to be a decent amount slower. And then for our kicks, these are actually really interesting. <laughs> like, there are cape swipes, even in the air. I think these are really cool looking buttons. So standing kick is actually um, very, very, very safe. It doesn't have too much recovery. It's only minus three on block. So same as our punches, basically. And it's a really good button with a lot of... Um, a lot of range, definitely more range than our punches, of course. But what's really good about this is because you can mash on it so much and it's really good as a combo tool, we can kind of just use it for anything. So as a combo tool, uh, after something like this, or anytime you launch the opponent into the air, hello, you can kind of get like a bunch of these in a row. And then once you get the third one, you can go into a 2D and stuff, so it's 
really good for like slowing down your combos and just like easily going, okay, I've got the hit, let me go into a 2D and end however I like. But it's also really good in neutral now because of its real safety combined with its cancelability makes it pretty good because obviously as a, you know, a nice reaching poke, it has the cancelability that other pokes like this do not. So I can actually go into my 2D, which we'll get to, is super, super long reaching. So I can just cancel into that and my 2D is cancelable. So this makes for a really good string that I can just go for whenever. I might try that, that out a little bit more. And we've actually got some nice command normals, like we've got this um, 6k here, which is really good for going into combos, especially depending on how close you are, because you can go into the 6h slam to build back a bunch of mana. So this 5k is probably something I'm going to be using a little bit more. And the 2k is pretty similar to most 2ks, you know, it doesn't have as much range, but it's got the same cancelability awesomeness that we were just talking about with the 6k and with the 2d. So that's going to be interesting. I'm excited to mash on those buttons a little bit more than I already was. And then for our H, we have this massive actual Ramlethal style button. They didn't have the hitboxes on Dust Loop, unfortunately, but it's safe to say this thing reaches really far and it feels like it has a pretty decent disjoint. Like I was able to use this against Giovanna's Drill Kick and a lot of other like really powerful tools and kind of just use it as a, hey, please, please, please stop going crazy at me right now. I cannot afford to block all this stuff you're doing because I'm going to run out of mana. So really long reaching, really good disjoint. And unfortunately it's vertical uh, hitbox does not seem very good. People can really easily get over it even if they're like barely, barely, barely above it. So it's mainly used for grounded opponents and I'm not sure if they can 6p it. I still haven't tested that. And of course, it's gonna be your main extension off of your far slash and your 2s and stuff like that because it cancels into them. And considering how far you can use it from and how far it pushes the opponent back and that it's cancelable, it's, a, it's, it's safe. Like, as long as you're using a, a dumb block, don't worry, you're not gonna get punished. And we'll get more into this when we go into combos and stuff, but anytime you do something like this or are doing some kind of combo that's, yeah, I don't know, like this, you get your little bits of dash ups. Uh, maybe you go, depending on what specials we have, you get to do different dash ups into different things. But just because this reaches really consistently off of the far slash, because it reaches way further than the far slash, you don't have to worry about, oh, I only hit at the very tip of my far slash, will it connect? It'll connect, don't worry. And really frequently, it'll actually even connect into your super, so you can get a nice chunk of damage and build back a bunch of mana or bookmarks, whatever you like. So it's a really good button and a really good way of obviously ending your combos and just adding into your pokes to push the opponent further away and cancel into something else. So let's have him actually block just to see how much we push them back just by doing like this. So yeah, if you're safe, you can cancel into stuff. And you know, if you are that kind of Asuka player, you can dash in and go for more buttons or stuff afterwards. But it's just really good, really long ranged, spicy stuff and really good for confirming off of any kind of juggles you happen to get from your wild projectiles. Just like that. From the very tip of my fast slash, it still connects, no problemo. The only problem is if they're a little bit too high, but luckily that doesn't seem to happen too often, or at least in my experience. And then the 2H is another really interesting button. It's this multi-hitting, I don't know, spinning Beyblade <laughs> thing, I'm not sure. But it's really good, it's really good, because as you can see, it's just so good at juggling the opponent naturally, it just puts the opponent straight into the air, where you can just, if you're close, it can juggle into close slash, even if you've already used a close slash. And it, it's just super amazing, as long as you... The one thing that's not good about it, and I'll keep talking about why it's amazing afterwards, but what I don't like about it, is that on block, it is um, not the greatest, as you can see here, if I'm really close to the opponent, you know, you'll get the three hits. But if I do any kind of sequence or if I'm not right beside the opponent when I go for it, it'll either totally whiff or they'll FD. So the first button will connect and you think you can go into it, but then they FD and then it totally whiffs and then they can easily punish you. Or even if the first hit hits and they FD that, then the last ones won't and you're left a bunch minus. It's really only good if you know you're, or you're pretty sure you're gonna get a hit. 
But as we mentioned, if you are close and I do block it, it is only minus three, so it's not the biggest deal. But just do be careful, it is, uh, I find it a bit of a traitor when it comes to close range combat. But when it's on hit, oh, this thing is amazing. Look at this kind of stuff I can do. Just juggle, 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 juggle all day long. Meterless combos into my book slam, build mana after I cancel after the slam. Look at all that damage I just get totally for free. Similar stuff can be done after a 2S, even though it gives you a little bit of extra juggles. You can go into stuff like this. You can go into your supers. It's, it's really amazing. And I'm sure if you see any Asuka combo video, either it's just gonna be a few buttons into a special or a super, or it's gonna be someone using this for a bunch of meterless routes into a spell, into stuff like this. Because this, I feel like, is the main way that Asuka gets his sauce. As you can see here, because it has a ton of hits done, it's like the only normal that he has that consistently connects into all of his different cubes. Because the different cubes have different amounts of startups and have different things they need to be comboed into. But as you can see, you can go into any of the cubes and still have time to bookmark right afterwards. So I can go I've got the blue cube mapped in my heavy slash spell slot here. So I can go for, throw the cube, and then grab it straight back afterwards, and it still it gives me enough juggle time in the combo to extend it. And blue's actually the hardest, because it has the least stun. So I can easily dash up, and if it's any of the other cubes, you can easily dash up for another close slash, and it's just a really really, really awesome way of extending your combos and easily extending your combos if you feel like doing some fancy, fancy spell extension stuff. Even though I recommend if you can, <laughs> if you do know that you're gonna get the hit, you may as well just use the awesome meterless combo options that you have because you're not gonna get many options to go for damage and you may as well save your spells for when you're frantically going through your job. But you know, that's it, of course. If something is gonna kill, do it. And then, yeah, that's basically it for 2H. Really, really good combo extender because of how it juggles and can cancel into any of your cubes. Even the really slow ones like the yellow or... Um, yeah, I think the yellows are slowest. The green ones as well. You'll combo into most of the ones you get most of the time. And then for our dust, it's a decently long-reaching, only slightly micro-step in from Round start distance it reaches, so a lot of the time you'll find me doing it after my 5k because, you know, my opponent gets really scared of the weird things I'm going to be doing and then he's got really good dust combos like this. They're relatively e easy, I'll just say what it was. It's um, heavy slash, slash, jump cancel, heavy slash, slash, heavy slash, jump cancel, heavy slash, and heavy slash again for the finisher. So, H, S, jump, H, S, H, jump, H, H. And I missed the last jump there. But as you see, you can make it a little bit simple and omit that last jump if you do just want to guarantee the damage or the hard knockdown ender. But yeah, pretty damaging and consistent dust combo that works against all different weights of characters. So I'm going to keep going for that. And our 2D, actually, let's just talk about the throw before we get to 2D because the 2D is really cool. The throw is pretty nice. It has a decently long knockdown that you can go for a bit of a mana charge and still be advantageous enough to do a little bit of a dash in into buttons. So that's really good. I'm trying to go for throws as much as I can with Asuka, especially if I'm low on mana. I'm trying to go for any of my dust buttons, honestly. If I go for a 2D, I get a hard knockdown. If I get a this, I get jet damage. If I get this, get some damage, get some mana, and get to go in. So the throw is pretty good. It seems like he has pretty easy options to go for safe jumps because of how weird his jump in, but they're not going to be the regular way. You can't just dash in and stuff because he'll land way before them. But from what I've seen, you can even just dash up and like just do a neutral jump into buttons or whatever. But basically, you just you need to do a delayed um, regular jump into any of your buttons and it'll be a pretty easy safe jump. But unfortunately, I do not have the information how to make it easily auto-timed, kind of just dash up into a neutral jump I've found works most consistent because you can just see, okay, I'm close to my opponent now, and now, judging that I've gotten that far in my dash, it should be the right time to go for my safe jump. So yeah, but most of the time, <laughs> I'm not actually going for safe jumps because, what, you think I'm actually being a tryhard? No, I'm just desperately building back my mana so I don't die. 
and from our 2D, this is a really cool button. So it works like most 2Ds in that, you know, it gives you a hard knockdown. You can, you know, OTG afterwards. If I let, get a 2K 2D, I can get a slash or just do it into itself, whatever, to push them further away. It works like that. But it actually is technically a projectile, which is one of the only bad things about it, because that means if you RC it, you only get a purple RC, so you're not going to get a big red RC combo. <clears throat> and that also means that if the opponent jumps over it or like you just slightly whiff with it and somehow they punish you, you'll get a big punish uh, counter combo because you know, projectiles and strive leave you in a counter recovery state. So if they ever punish you after this, just be ready to get your ass beat and probably lose the game. So make sure you they're either blocking it or getting hit by it or else you die. But as you can see, very fast very long reaching. It's a pretty ridiculous move that you can throw out at distances that your heavy slash might not even reach. So heavy slash doesn't reach there, but 2D does. And I can still cancel my 2D into my projectiles. Unfortunately, the only one that seems to con consistently combo is the blue, or of course the fire explosion because it's like instant. But any of the yellow cubes or other stuff, okay, never mind. I guess from close range, some others can. And even if they don't hit, they will OTG, so you get a little bit of damage and push them full screen. So it really does, doesn't matter. And of course, what's awesome is if you know that you get a 2k 2d, maybe you're gonna counter hit, counter hit 2k and then you go 2k 2d again. Then you can cancel the 2k 2d into any of your mana rebuilds. You can even use the one that doesn't take your life or your uh, tension gauge. And you get to build back maybe 25% of it just from this regular version. But if you do really need your mana back, I suggest you go into the one that takes your tension or your life. Because as you can see, just from this knockdown, I get to build back basically two thirds of my mana gauge. And that's super awesome. And of course, if you spend your life, you don't need to hold it down for long at all. And you'll instantly get all of it back. But you are losing life. So just be careful. Uh, yeah, it's an awesome 2D. It's also really awesome in combos. Because, as we were talking about, if I ever throw out a projectile or I'm just in a juggle state, I can easily go like, oh, 5k, and then I can go 5k into 2d, or I can go 5k, 5k into 2d, and just keep kind of like bouncing them up and up, and just get a bunch of hits, and it's a nice way of slowing down the pace. While you're doing these 5k juggles, you can be like, oh, what spells do I have? Ah, oh, where, like, what's, what's going on? How much mana do I have? And then you can... While you're juggling with those, decide how you want to end your combo after your 2D and how you're going to eventually, hopefully, obliterate your opponent. Might happen, might ha not happen, but the 5k juggles into this really awesome 2D that is cancelable, super long reaching, definitely helps. Like that there, and then I could have gone into another projectile to end the combo I like or whatever. It's a really good button for a bunch of either in neutral, as long as you know that they're going to be on the ground, or in combos, because it, it'll just always connect. And as for a few command normals, 6P, you know, the hitbox looks nice. I'd like it to be a little bit more horizontal so that I can use it like a little bit more of a scrub. Like, I need an Eno or Testament level 2D with this character. Or maybe I'm just lazy and I need that kind of 2D with anyone. But it seems fine, it works. It's not crappy like old Lewis, Lewis's and it does hit people out of the air, and you can decently 6P uh, the 6 people buttons, like Happy Chaos's forward slash and stuff like that. So it seems fine, but until I get the, that hitbox image from Dust Loop and they put that up, we won't know if it's totally crazy or just fine. And another command normal that is really good is this 6K. And I only really started using it recently in my gameplay, but I should have been using it from the start, because this thing is awesome. And it's one of your only normals, just like your 2H, that can actually juggle into any of your spells. See, it even combos into my slow, like, electricity one, it'll combo into the multi ones. It is such a good uh, uh, command normal, especially since it can go link off of most of your normal pokes. You can just go into it tons, and as we mentioned, it's only minus three or four on block, so you can just throw this out and you're like, I'm safe. You don't even need to, you're not obliged to cancel it into something to keep yourself safe, which a lot of characters in this game actually don't have the privilege of. And of course, most of the time, you probably will be canceling it because you're an Oscar player, you're gonna be desperately scrambling to throw out any special move you can, but it's nice to know that you don't actually have to special cancel it. 
And this can actually lead to um, a bunch of um, useful combo routes, which I'll talk more about when we get to the combo section. But it's good that off of this, these like K pokes that we have that are really good. Anytime you go into this, you can go into a, a spell throw of any level, and depending on what the spell is, you can maybe get uh, extra stuff. But even with this light one, I can go for a micro dash, 5k, 6h, and your 6h is a great ender we'll get to in a sec, because it lets you build back a ton of mana. You can build back a third, even just with the regular version, build back a bunch with the, the um, tension version, and the one that takes your life, you only need to hold it for a second and you can still go in and get Oki afterwards. It's a super, super great combo ender, because it just lets you build back all the resources you want and still be at an advantage. So being able to use this as a way of just easily going into it from any kind of hit is really awesome. And if you do it into your green or yellow projectiles, you actually have time to rebookmark them before you go for the dash in. So, um, as you can see there, I spent the greens, uh, bookmarked them, and then did the dash in into the 6H, just because they give you a little bit more hits done than the blue projectile. But if you do use the blue projectile in it, it's still totally worth it, even if you don't bookmark during the combo, because you can easily bookmark after the 6H. Whoops. And then go for your mana regain. It, it's just really, really good, and I suggest you use it, because when I started using it, I noticed a significant improvement. And it, of course, it can also be used um, off of your P buttons. It doesn't combo, but... Um, it makes for good block strings, or just going into this low, it, it's just good. It's good. <laughs> I'm gonna stop rambling about it. Then I think the last command normal we have is this big boy 6H, which, you know, uh, it's a big book slam. It's an overhead, it's slow, and it leads to a hard knockdown. That's basically all it does. As you can see, if I want to get more damage from the hard knockdown, I can go into anything. I can even do like a 2D to push them really far away and get more damage that way. But most of the time, if you're using this as a combo ender, so if I just end a combo in it, it, it splats them to the ground. And then, as I mentioned, you can easily go into any of your mana regens, basically build back all of your mana, depending on which one you use. And if you use the one that takes your life, you can build back all of your mana and still go for a meaty close slash. So that is just really awesome. And if you do need to bookmark some stuff, you can bookmark them. Oops. or you just can fail because its inputs are too complicated, but as you can see there, I can bookmark them and still have time to build back a little bit of mana. Maybe if I was doing that micro bit of mana, I would, um, oh look, I can bookmark and still go for an OTG. But yeah, I can do it for that and then still... build back mana. So if I bookmark one, I'm probably going to go into my life one because it builds back a lot of mana quickly. It's just a really, really good combo ender. And when you use it in a combo, it's not like it just leaves you with a long, hard knockdown. It also leaves you at a really, really far away distance, which is super handy. So if I use it here, as you can see, we're left like close, maybe three quarters of the screen away from each other. Anyways, it's a nice, decent distance, so it's not like I'm doing all of these do-do-do-do-do, setting up stuff right in his face, and if I mess up, I'm gonna be punished. I'm all the way over here, so even if I accidentally, you know, overextend, hold things down for too long, I'm gonna be fine, and I get a bunch of resources back. It's really, really awesome. I highly suggest you use it. And of course, it's also a damaging ender, and also, if you wanna use it, maybe you're using it in a combo, and you realize, actually, I want to extend my combos, depending on how you, far you are from the opponent, or maybe you're using it as a mix-up. It does actually just naturally combo into everything, even stuff like this. So that is really, really good. Because you can use it as mix and extend your combos off of it. And of course, that also means you can RC or go for a super or whatever afterwards. So another really, really good command normal for Asuka. And then quickly with his jumping buttons, jump P, and yeah, it's a jump P. Jump K is actually really good because it covers what other buttons don't cover, but we'll come back to it. Jump Slash and Jump Heavy Slash both seem kind of similar. Um, jump Slash is just a bit fa uh, faster and has like less recovery and stuff. So as you can see, if I do it instantly in there, I still can get it backdash afterwards, which I wouldn't be able to from this one because 
longer recovery and total duration. And Jump Dust is actually another interesting one. Um, it's slightly faster than our Jump Heavy Slash, and it kind of has this like um, disjoint with the, the book slam, and I don't know, it's kind of interesting. When we get to uh, some different spells where you can increase the gravity and you get shorter jumps, you can actually get instant overheads with this Jump Dust, so there's a lot of interesting things with it, and I think I should use it more for my dash-ins. It just looks kind of weird to me, so I, that's basically why I don't use it. But Jump Slash and Heavy Slash are good um, horizontal reaching jump-ins. The only thing is that if the opponent is crouching, they don't connect after an IAD, unless you d delay the jump-in afterwards and go like that, which just makes yourself a lot slower and more reactable, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But what's good about the um, Jump Kick that I was talking about is it actually will hit I believe opponents a bit more easily, possibly not. Maybe if they have slightly larger hitboxes. Anyways, when I was playing with him, it seemed like it hit in a lot of times that the other ones didn't. And it's the only one that'll actually cross up the opponent. So if I do fly over their head, I will be able to hit them no matter where I am. It also makes it your good head to air button if the opponent's like doing some weird stuff on top of you. Um, you can just jump in the air and hit this, and no matter what side they are, it'll actually hit them. And, you know, it can link it to your jump dust, dash cancel, whatever. And all of these jump ins, of course, we're playing Asuka. You can cancel them into cubes or spells or whatever you want to do. Just for some weird jump pressure, whatever you feel like going for. It's a pretty decent um, jump in that covers this cross up option that he doesn't get from any of his others. And I think that's all of his buttons. Now let's quickly talk about specials. And once again, we're not gonna talk about all the goddamn spells because that's just too much work and I've got another video already dedicated to that. So we're just gonna talk about how he uses his different specials, his regens, his bookmarks, and his summons in his general game plan and also his supers. And then we'll also talk about how they're used for combo routing and general game plans. So, Asuka basically has three special moves, down forward, down back, and down down. And they're different depending on which button you press, punch, kick, slash, or heavy slash. Down forward is your spell summon, and after you've done a spell summon or whatever, I think the game calls it a chant, you can just press forwards and a different button and you'll do a different one of your spells from the spells in your bottom spell list. So I can do a kick, into heavy slash, and then I throw out both of those projectiles. I could do punch, and then slash, and I'll do the card refill, and then the staff summon. Easy stuff. Down back is the way Asuka redraws his spells. So once I throw out this punch spell, I go down back, and I bookmark a new random spell from my current deck into that slot. So then we've got down forward to cast the spell, and down back to replenish it. And after you're in your cancel ability, and this is something about Oscar, you can cancel all of his specials into each other through this kind of cancel tree. So I can cancel all my specials into each other just by pressing forwards after I do the first down forward motion. And I can also cancel the summons into the refills just by pressing back and the corresponding buttons. So I can use all of these spells right now and then cancel into the bookmarks for all of them. And I'll try and do that. Actually, I don't know why I don't have my on the screen I should have had this the whole time. Whoopsie, control the display. So now I, I can show what it looks like to do all of these. So I can go do, 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 do. So as you can see, I threw out all my spells, bookmarked them all back right afterwards. And yeah, those are the first two special moves. And then we've also got down, down, which is his mana replenishes. If you go down, down punch, he'll just regain it slowly and it takes a little while to refill all the way. If you do kick, it refills a bit faster, but as you can see, it takes away a bit of my tension gauge. But it's probably the one I use the most because uh, it doesn't take a huge amount. Of, see, it fills up about half of my mana just for a tiny little bit of my tension, which really is just like one close slash in this game. So I most of the time use this tension costing one because I think it's the most worth it. Or if you really need to get back your mana stat like <laughs> instantly, so maybe you're really low, you can do down, down, slash and at the cost of some of your life, you'll build it back super, super quick. So even if, if I'm like at like half mana gauge here and I cancel into this, it'll basically instantly be full, but it will take a little bit of your life, so be careful. You don't 
even though it's tempting, and I have done it before, if you're really low on mana, you really don't want to do this one because it does consume a large, large portion of your life. It can consume like up to nearly a quarter or a fifth of your life, it's crazy. And if you do the down down heavy slash version, it's actually slightly different. It doesn't regain your mana, it actually changes which deck of spells you're in. So if you're aware, Asuka has three different modes basically, where he has different decks of cards that he can draw. Where, you know, there are some crossover cards, and there are some that are exclusive to different ones, and there's different ratios, different cards. And you've got your three test cases. And if you press down, down, heavy slash, and punch, you'll change to one. Uh, kick, you change to two. And slash, you change to the full moon, which is three. Once again, information about the test cases is in the spell video. But now that we've got the three special moves, oh yeah, also for the down, down special moves, you can add this to your cancel uh, tree just by, after you like do a special or something, you can just press down and you'll instantly start charging your mana afterwards. And you can even go uh, summon and then press back with the button again to re-bookmark and then press down and punch kick or slash to regain your mana. So I can throw out this golden cube, re-bookmark it and then get some mana, watch. As you can see, I refilled it and gained mana right after I threw it, which is particularly good for some of your cubes, like your yellow or your green one, which have tons of hit stun. It still works with your blue one, but if they block it, then you may not be very advantageous and you might not get to charge much mana. So those are the three special moves. I'm just gonna change it so I don't have weird stuff in my slot here. Just start with test case one. So those are the three special moves. They're the only things you need to know about. I guess I'll quickly talk about the supers here as well because they're not that complex. So. You've got your super with punch and kick is this kind of projectile super. And the only thing that's different is that the punch one will be affected by uh, if I have a staff spell. So if I have like this one here, or actually let's show a cooler one. If I have a staff on the screen, it'll be affected by it. And that's the only difference. So if I have this gravity one, that sucks things in. Yeah, as you can see, it's affected by it and it gets sucked around and does a bunch of wacky stuff. So that'll be affected by it, but my, if I press kick, it won't be. It'll just go straight through, so there's no chance of you accidentally messing it up because of that. And then if you do your slash super, it's where you go into this mode where you can just press the buttons, punch, kick, slash, or heavy slash, and switch out what cards you have. And it's also useful if I'm completely out of cards, I've spent all my specials um, and I just want to get them back. Maybe, hopefully I have some mana. But then if I go for the super, it automatically fills them all up and then I can cycle through, oh, do I want that one? Do I want that one? Oh, do I want that one? And you only have about two seconds, but if you are frost, you can select a bunch of projectiles or whatever you like, just so that you can go pretty ham at the end of the game. And yeah. <laughs> that's basically the two supers. The one thing that I think we mentioned early in the video as well that's really good about this punch and kick super is that it's only six frames, so you can kind of sneak it in as a bit of a reversal, especially if you have an opponent that's being crazy on offense, like doing IADs on top of you, or like dashing in with like a big reaching button, or uh, doing like a flying drill kick of Giovanna's or something. You can throw this out like pretty easily on reaction if you can do the input quickly. It's only six frames and it catches IADs, it catches a lot of stuff because it's so fast and it blasts the opponent completely full screen. And then obviously afterwards, I can, you know, while they're knocked down, charge up my mana, rebook some spells, and it's also plus on block, so you can do the exact same thing even if you do mess up and you think the opponent's running at you and pressing a button, but they actually just block. It doesn't matter. You still push them totally a, a ways away and you can build back a little bit of mana or bookmarks as such. Because it's plus unlock. And also, it's obviously very, very good to use in combos. So maybe I've done, you know, a few buttons into a spell, and I'm not sure if this is actually right, but it feels like it can be cancelled from your spells. Because it just comes out so quick, maybe they just have low recovery, but it really feels like when I do this, it's actually cancelling into the super, so it's really, really easy to go into this super off of any spell throw. Even, I think, the red explosion that launches them super far away can be cancelled early enough to go into this. Yeah. So, 
very, very easy. Even just from a straight fast slash into heavy slash, for most distances this works. If you're super far away or there's a lot of gravity in your combos, there's a chance that this might not work, but it generally works pretty well. And as you can see there with all this distance, I can charge up all my mana and stuff. It's a really, really handy super and has a lot more applications than just adding damage or breaking a wall like most supers are in this game, even though it's pretty simple. So now the strategy around using the special moves, like obviously Asuka's thing is just filling the screen with massive projectiles, tons of them that just cover every option. Um, but you have to be pretty strategic with how you go through your special moves. And I mentioned the special move tree and how that works is when you go into any of your special moves, either down forward or down back, you can go into this cancel state where, as we mentioned, you can either go back with a button to make a bookmark, forwards to summon a different spell, or down with punch kick or slash to rebuild your mana or change your test case with H. Um, and the skill tree works if you start with a spell summon. So as you can see, if I do a summon like this, I can go through the whole tree of throw, rebook, and then mana regen. And I can do the same thing off of rebook. So if I book here, then throw, as you can see, those cancel into each other. And then obviously I can cancel into the mana as well. The only thing that doesn't let you enter this kind of special cancel tree is from the mana regen. So if I do my mana regen in neutral, I can't just press forwards and heavy slash and do that summon. It just won't work. But luckily it has a lot of, uh, sorry, it has very little recovery. So you can basically go from it and release it and go instantly into a special move. You just have to do the motion. And before I quickly talk about um, like combos and stuff, something I do want to mention about this mana summon is it actually has very, very little recovery. As you can see, when I use it here, as soon as I let go of the button, I basically instantly recover, which actually ends up being really, really useful as a neutral tool because I can kind of do this one that doesn't cost any of my resources. And even though it takes a while, it takes a moment for the moment for the opponent to realize, oh, he's not throwing anything right now. He's in this like mana regen state. So a lot of the time, the opponent just runs up and does some wild stuff, throw themselves at me. A lot, um, an opponent I fought against, uh, Potemkin, always went for Hammerfall and just charged in from full screen. And because this recovers so easily, I can just hold it down until he's right in front of me, and then I just block and then punished with a 2k duty. Or a Giovanna that I like held it down, and then when I saw, oh, she is going for her flying across the screen kick thing, I can just hold this down, and then when she's going for that, 6p just straight out of it because it is such little recovery that you can really just use it in neutral and you just have to, as long as you have the time to hold it down for a little bit, you can release it and go for counterplay at any moment, which I think is really, really cool and a really, really good way of baiting because the opponent, see, like it does look like something that you're gonna be trapped in, like holding down for a while and that might be punishable, but it's absolutely not. You can just go straight into offense right afterwards, which is a really good way of catching high ADs or whatever. And I recommend you just try going nuts after using this and seeing if you can catch them getting caught or whatever. <laughs> and then, yeah, how these special work when you're not just like throwing a projectile. And like, like we mentioned, when you throw a projectile, you wanna do the projectile summon with down forward and then back to bookmark or down to mana or both. So from full screen, I can kind of do both because I've got so much time. So I can throw this out, press back and then regain some mana back and I can regain costing my life or costing my mana or whatever. If I'm slightly closer to the opponent, especially if I'm throwing a blue projectile, I might not have time to do that. So maybe if I'm low on mana, I'll just throw it and then go straight into my mana regen so that I get a bunch of mana. Or if I've got really not many um, spells in my spell deck, I might just go into a bunch of different recalls. Instead of doing the, re the bookmark into the mana, I might just get all my bookmarks back or whatever. So obviously, you can choose what you do depending on your distance and depending what you need, of course. Now, yeah, of course, a lot of your pressure is gonna be pretty simple, especially, you know, these day one and stuff doesn't have to be too complicated, but just like, you know, a few buttons into a projectile is practically always gonna be plus, even if you go for the uh, bookmark afterwards or a little bit of mana summon, particularly the green and yellow projectiles because they're just so plus with so many hits. 
that I can go in, go for the bookmark and still be plus after it starts hitting the opponent. So that's really good. It just makes for simple pressure strings that are the exact same thing you would go for on hit. And a few things like this red explosion, you can particularly aim for that when you're up close because it is short ranged. Uh, if the opponent gets hit by it, they get blasted fully full screen. And if they do block it, it puts them in a guard crush. So obviously you're plus run up for a throw or more pressure or whatever you like. It's a, it's a good spell for when you're close range. Let's get this stupid stuff out of my up bar because I do not want that all the time. Um, there we go. <laughs> I just wanted to show one thing with the red spell. Uh, and like, of course, if the opponent doesn't block it, it blasts them totally full screen, so you can easily build back your mana and bookmarks and stuff. And as you can see here in the corner, if they get hit by it, it's super good because it leads to a wall splat. And you get some cool combos that way. So now let's talk about the regular combos we're going to be getting. Unfortunately, um, off punches, you're not going to get too much other than just maybe pushing them away with a 6P into a projectile. Excuse me. Which, you know, eh, it doesn't really work, but don't worry, you're not going to be going for that often, or at least I don't think so. More often, you're going to be poking with your 2S or your um, bar slash into your heavy slash, because they're just you know, your big buttons, they're the ones you poke with. And when you get these, depending on what the distance is, you can go into certain stuff. You'll practically always be able to go into a blue cube unless you're at really, really far range. Or if you start with the 2S, because that increases the gravity in your combos. So if I start with the fast slash, it basically always goes into a blue cube. And then blue cube on hit, because I've got the hit stun from it, I can do a bookmark into some mana recall. Or, you know, if I feel like being really crazy, I can dash in, get some kind of safe jump pretty easily from it. All of the spells on hit have some crazy amount of advantage, but usually from my experience you're going to be using that advantage to build back your resources rather than going for some crazy offense, although you totally can. If you are closer, you can combo into your uh, green projectiles. You have to be pretty close though. I should probably bookmark it instead of being random and looking for it like this. So if I'm close, I can go do, do and my green projectiles will actually combo, then I can do a little bit of a dash in into a super or whatnot. But you're gonna be getting this a lot, and I recommend you either go into your blue cubes, straight into a super. A lot of the time I find myself doing this, particularly if I'm uh, out of mana and I just need something to, to, to go for a combo. Totally out of mana, maybe the opponent's been hitting me so I can't use any of my spells, so I just go do, do, into this. And this works from basically any range, and then it gives me the plus frames to build back my mana and build back my spells. So that's useful as well. And you can also, something I find myself doing, particularly in like the middle of games, where I'm kind of low on mana, but you know, nothing ridiculous, I'll just go from this into this and to just the mana, mana regen, because it pushes them so far away, I can get a good amount of mana regen, and then I'm full screen and I can start throwing my projectiles, depending on what I have. So those are your three options. Either throw a blue cube and then get your bookmark and mana, or go into a super, or just go straight into your mana or bookmarking afterwards. Which is also pretty fine on block because they think there's a projectile coming towards you and then you can just instantly end the mana and then go for a fast slash again. It ends at least to some pretty funny sequences, like if I'm doing something like this, they're probably expecting a projectile to come at them. So when you don't throw a projectile, you can kind of reset the sequence like that. And as you can see, it builds a lot of a lot, a lot of risk gauge just from simple sequences. So that's your fast slash into heavy slash situations you're going to get pretty often. Another common situation is going to be your kicks. Um, totally seamless cut to me recording this in a different country now, but I think we were talking about the combos we get off of our kick buttons. And like we were saying with the 2H, which is, you know, a really awesome combo normal that you can link into any of your things super, super, super easily. But we've also got an option off of our kick normals, which is our 6K. So after 2K or 5K, so you can easily go into 6K. And like I mentioned before, no matter which spells we have, as long as it's a blue, green, or yellow cube, they will all be able to combo from the 6K because it just has enough hits done, so it's really, really useful. Just as useful as your 2H, in my opinion. 
and it's even more useful because it's used off of your 2k and your 5k normals and it's totally totally safe at minus three or something so you don't even have to cancel it you can go for a throw afterwards if they think you're going to cancel into something else it's really good so see i've got my yellow cube in here so if i go for a simple combo like this i can even bookmark it and still get a combo extension afterwards so like Oh crap, I just, no, I just threw it away. Okay, wait, I can do it with this as well. And if you get a little bit of an extra dash up, I believe you can even get a close slash there. Then go into a 2D or whatever as the ender. But something that I really like about using this as a way to extend combos is it's probably the most consistent way I've found of doing a meterless combo into your 6H ender. Because... If you have a blue cube, which is probably one of the most common cube projectiles to get, you can go into the into the blue cube and just do, oops, sorry, double sorry, into the 6H Ender. And like we've talked about a bunch of times by now, 6H Ender is really good because you can build back mana and still be plus enough to go for Oki. So it's a really, really good ender. It leaves you decently far. Really, really good ender. And you can do that just with the blue cube on its own. Or if you use the green or the yellow cubes for this, you can actually bookmark after them and still have enough time to dash in for it. As you can see there, end in the 6H. And then after the 6H, like we mentioned, you can do whatever bookmarking mana cancelling you want for a decent amount of time and then dash up, go for 2s or if you have enough time, go for close slash since it's plus or whatever or just back off and go for more zoning and yeah, I think those are the main combo routes we have to talk of either just connecting long pokes into either collecting resources throwing a cube into a better way of collecting resources or just straight into a super or going from if we're close enough, we can get these two H loop combos. And the two H loop combos can also easily be extended using cubes. And we've also got our 5k normals, which can also be done off of close slash or 2p if they just get hit by the brambles after 2p, because this is a low. And then off of these, you can just cancel into any of our cubes. And usually I would just end with building resources here, but as you can see, you can also cancel into a super. And honestly, combo-wise, I think that's all we really need to know. We've also got this dust combo. So that's basically all the combos we need to know down. Even the mix-up ones, like this overhead that we have in our hotbar now, you basically combo off of it like you would off of any other projectile, just dash up, go for some kind of conversion, either build back resources or throw a super. If you're close enough when you throw it out, you can um, go for the 2H loops. Like, the combo pathing, as long as you understand, when you're close, you go for 2H. If you're far away, just try and get the fast slash, heavy slash into something. And if they're on the ground, the bramble's a really good way of going into cube combos. And then that's basically the only combo stick extensions you really need to know that are like fundamental. And because once you know these, that's basically covers every situation you're gonna find yourself, from what I've found with Asuka. And then just, you know, with zoning, a few general things, um, obviously, maybe not obviously, but maybe it's just something I do, but a lot of instant air backdashes into either buttons. I like to instant air backdash or jump into a button and then maybe throw a projectile afterwards. It's a good way of just covering a lot of the screen and backing off. Going for a jump backwards or a jump back dash just gives you time to like back off. The opponent can't really hit you while you're making such a fast uh, retreat. So you can go back and then be like, okay, what do I have? Okay, like I can throw that out, fill back my manner if it gets hits them. And it's just a good way of, you know, obviously build space. It just gives you a little bit of time to think and it throws out the projectiles at a height where they can't IAD over them, obviously, because you're throwing them from literally in the air which is really good for the blue cube, um, particularly, and the yellow cube, since they don't really cover those heights normally. But the green cube, you may as well just throw on the ground and go straight into your mana region, because you can. And I think that's really all we have to say. The spells have a lot of nuance. If 
there are different styles on the screen. You'll have different ways of covering the screen or having the projectiles go faster and causing guard crushes or whatever. There's lots of gimmicky stuff. And of course, we have our overheads and lows, which we'll have access to sometimes. Sometimes. And basically, whenever we get one of the green cards, um, I'm just going to use it whenever I can, especially near the beginning of the round. Just go straight into this stuff, even if it's not a good combo, because it just makes it so you either... Uh, it makes it so your spells cost less, or you build more mana, or it comes back instantly. It's just going to be a good effect, no matter what. So you just throw it out right at the beginning of the round, and it'll make you deplete a lot less quickly, which is something that I find myself running into as a problem quite often. So throw that out whenever you can. And whenever we get a yellow spell, I kind of... You get this one pretty often in test case one. So I kind of just throw out all my other spells, save this one for last, and as long as I have mana afterwards, I can throw this one out, and I've got a totally new set of spells and a bunch of mana just to go crazy afterwards, and this is a really good way of ending out the round. The opponent kind of thinks, oh, they're getting a little bit low, they don't have any spells, I can go in, but then I throw that, and then I've got tons of stuff to blast their face with. And yeah, I think that's kind of the zoning and combos for Asuka, but very simply. Each projectile is going to have their own unique way of using, and of course, he's a very complex character, but as for the game plan he's going for, just throw stuff, build back resources whenever you can after you've thrown stuff, and just try your best to convert with either your long-range buttons or get close for these loops. And I think I've repeated myself enough to know that it's about time we head online and try these tips out. I will, uh, see you there. Okay, and Axel. Right then. Not even really sure what to say. We're just gonna try and do some matches forward. I'm not sure. Asuka's pretty difficult. I'm trying my best. We'll just see how we go. There might be sets that are incredibly awful and other sets that are incredibly hype, but it's probably more likely to be the first option, but <laughs> I don't want to be too much of a... Oh, that's kind of good because of all of extended hitboxes. Oh, but he can also break my cubes really easily. Oops, I did not mean to use that spell. And now I'm out of mana. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, break the wall, get some positive bonus. Then we can spend all our meter to build back mana whenever we like. Or he can just die. I'll take that too. Okay, <laughs> gets close there. Whenever I'm low on mana, I think my heart starts beating 15 times faster. I don't know what it is about this character. It's just like combining all the things you're meant to be thinking about. And then, not only is it so many things you have to think about, but there's so many things that can just go terribly, terribly wrong. Like, you lose your mana, you can't do any spells, you can't do any kind of combo extensions. You also take way, way, way crazy damage. It's just crazy. I'm gonna shut up. Because I'm dying. Build back some mana. That burst didn't hit it. <laughs> okay, I got Winter Mantis a lot there, but I'm gonna blame it on uh, me talking and not me being a scrub Oscar player. Okay, I'll take that. I don't really know what's going on right now, but it's going well. Oh yes, that long range dust, I love. Yes, okay. <laughs> dust combos are probably 50% of the damage that I deal in a game. So if an opponent doesn't or isn't able to react to dusts, that's a big win for me. I think the other 50% of my damage, oh yeah. We went straight down to floor eight from like 10 to Celestial Challenger, straight down to eight just because we were trying out Asuka, but hey, it happens, no shame. 
that deleted my projectiles really well too. That was not meant to happen. <laughs> Oops. Ah, yeah. Okay, so a lot of his attacks or his grabs are all gonna delete my projectiles, but my bomb seemed pretty good for um, hitting his extended hurt boxes. No. Okay, we've only got two spells. Ooh, we got a DP. And we uh, instantly after we have the DP, we don't have enough mana for it. Because this guy needs so much damn mana. Just to exist. Existing takes mana. What the heck? Once again, we got a dust. We actually tried to go for a bunch of dusts, but somehow at the end, that random frantic pressure, I did not mean to put that stuff on the screen, but it ended up working kind of okay. I think the only reason people are getting hit by anything that I do, I, that I do is because they're just so scared of Asuka because they don't really know what he's capable of, which you know, day two makes sense. Ouch. Yeah, that grab's kind of annoying. That's why I was kind of doing a bunch of IADs, IABDs, into projectiles. Hey, my combo dropped. I did not try to bait that. That was just a full-on drop. Oh, yes. Okay, the 5H seems like it actually has a pretty good disjoint for hitting stuff like that. No. No! Damn it. He didn't OTG me. That could have yet. At this point, when I have to kind of rush him down because I've got two freaking starves in my screen and not much mana, I kind of go back to day one, strive, scrub, and start IADing at really bad positions. No. 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 Yes, please. That went from no, no, no to yeah. We're actually doing something. <laughs> That's kind of how it works with Asuka. You're either getting absolutely pummeled and looking like it, like you've never played the game before, or it looks like you're doing the coolest card counting, shuffling gimmicks you've ever seen. Or you're just going for dust constantly like me. No, that didn't combo. Usually the blue brick combos, but I guess that was just too far. But hey, whatever was going on there was going on correctly. We were actually kind of winning. We were throwing things. We were building back mana and building back cards. And really, as long as we're doing that, even if we lose, <laughs> I think we're slightly getting a better grasp of Asuka. But it's going to take more than day one, day two to actually be able to do something that I would call interesting or thought through. And oh, a Potemkin, I watched a few sets of an actual high level Asuka playing against Potemkin. 
And it seems kind of rough, as if the steamrolly situation of Asuka either absolutely dominating or getting dominated applied in any other matchup, it applies tenfold in this one. Because if I go into burnout or Asuka burnout, mana burnout, one Potemkin Buster is literally like 70% of my entire life bar. So we've got to be slightly careful of that and okay, great start. I had to 6p that one, but you know, things don't work. Jesus Christ. We also love doing this. Oh my god, Jilver. He's jealous of my projectiles. Bro, I tried to dash in, do a jump in, and just get absolutely bonked by a freaking Potemkin stupidness. Like, I guess it makes sense you want to block the projectiles, but bro, chill, you don't need to use this all the time. You blocked that? Bro, don't. Thank goodness. I'll take, I'll take anything. I'll take a tiny bit of chip. That is stupid stuff. I hate drawing those blue stars. And even though they're really cool and have cool effects in training mode, in actual battles, bro, I don't have time to put that stuff on the screen. Ah, oh, yeah, I gotta do those in the air because he's they're always gonna be. Oh no, I thought that was... I keep messing up kick and slash, because I kind of expect it to go punch. Um, I don't know, I just mesh up the two middle ones. Okay, cool. OTGs. Don't really know what was going on there. I was trying to say something, I was trying to win. Wasn't expecting to win, but somehow we actually pulled something through. Maybe me actually talking over the top of me playing is actually helping, because it restricts the amount of um, brain power I can put into overthinking the matchup, because I think I overthink, or I just suck, but I think I overthink a lot of the stuff I do with Asuka and end up doing kind of nothing, so maybe restricting the amount of brain, oh god, brain power I have is actually going to be handy, oh no, no, I'm in burnout and ready to die. Oh, I didn't, I forgot that. He, he just mashed. You just somehow knew that I wasn't going to go for Oki there. I forgot that that would actually break his armor. I was expecting to make myself safe from it, kind of like um, an Anji spin, but... I don't know if this is going to combo, but at least it'll give me a bit of time. Put back some stuff. What? <laughs> What's going on there? No! Okay. okay. I am getting absolutely beat up by the Mega Fists, but at least when there are is this many of them, I have a chance of um, maybe knowing that it'll do another one. No, I thought he could be on the ground and I could go for a cheeky. Oops, wrong one. Okay, I need to go for some actual Oki. I keep doing all this fake Oki and expecting it to catch him because he'll go for a throw or something because he's a Potemkin, but it's not working. Does this work? Because it comes out really quickly. No, it does not work. Nothing works against Potemkin Buster. It was just a test. Bro, let me live. I just wanted to know. Oh, damn it. I meant to do regen, not summon.
Bro, those cubes didn't hit him. I thought... <laughs> oh. If I won every one of these rounds just by doing jump back slash... Purely because he seems so committed to doing Mega Fist constantly. So if he wasn't doing that, would I have taken any of these rounds? Maybe not. But that's not for us to ask. That's for us to appreciate. Oh, damn it, I meant... I hate when you accidentally... <laughs> any kind of input error can actually be so bad with this character, because like if you try to rebook Mark after you do the spell, and then for some reason you accidentally press a different button, then you just lose a spell, and very often it'll be one that you're kind of holding there. Oh, damn it, I thought he was gonna hit the wall! God, no. Okay, I'm getting out of here. Hit me. <laughs> My shield ran off. I had to win. And once again, won by jump back slash somehow. Oh, crap. No. I cannot afford to do that. Look how much mana that takes just because I got hit by a Potemkin Buster. Why do I lose mana just from getting hit? I know it's because of my shield, but that is just not, not cool. That is not on. Bro. And then I freak the hell out and die instantly. Just break the wall instantly, get a bunch of meter. Oh, he said no thank you. I do not want to take this meter. I do not want these spells anymore. I'll take it as a win. We're doing pretty good, surprisingly. Alright, and the last set is going to be against Sin. Do you think we can make it a three, three times success? Don't know if I've ever won three or been kind of okay in three sets in a row with... Oops, no, don't do that on block. Unfortunately, anything he likes to do for combos, do not just root work on block as well, because that would just be too easy, because he's, you know, doesn't really have much else he has to think about, so you may as well give him that to worry about as well. Thought I reacted to that, but apparently not. And I have no spell ability now. Great. Yeah, get him. Oh, I guess my spells cost less now, but it made me die, so I don't know why I went for that. Fast Slash was slightly more Fast Slashy than my Fast Slash. Damn, I thought I could have done that. I had two pretty decent spells as well. well I tried to read bookmark H. Okay, seems some kind of cool stuff with Jump Dust. Oh, and I am dying a lot because I have no mana. I'm so dead. Well, you know, kind of deserved it, you know. I tried, tried to play the game and I threw some special moves and then that makes my shield go down. So wait, how was that 2-1? Oh, I guess we've played before, what? Out. We both tried to do jump dust. No! Okay, he's, he's got mix. Mix is really bad for Asuka because every little hit takes a big chunk of my mana.
Okay, cool. I need that. Please don't burst it. Cool. Bro, leave me alone and now my shield's down. Okay, I think in the next round, I've just got a super focus on having mana so that I can afford to get hit by a few of his mixes and I don't just instantly die. And I'm still able to throw out some damn spells. Hey, no, why didn't I combo? I could have gotten it. Crap. If I had have comboed, I would have had enough for super and I would have gone for the super and I would have built back my resources. Okay. I thought the wall would have broken there and I wouldn't have to buffer into another spell. <laughs> I'm just so cautious about wasting too much meter or mana or stuff and just absolutely killing myself by it. But then I also kind of just end up doing nothing sometimes, like then. slide on. That was really crappy, but at least I somehow didn't get punished by it. Thanks for letting me get my spells back, bro. Come on, yes! Simple combos after an RC, just take any damage I can get guaranteed. Was that the last match? No, I think we... Oh. No, okay. At least we can keep playing, thank goodness. Okay. Focusing on maintaining my mana seemed to work pretty well there. Oh, no, I did not mean to do that one. Trust me, bro. Source, trust me, I didn't mean to do it. No! Get off. Oh my goodness, he keeps RCing right before or right after I press my burst. Thank you for that. Come on, get my man back! No, I didn't mean to do that one. I meant to do the, the rock one, and then somehow I messed that up. No, fast slash. Come on. I don't know why I even tried to go for a spell there. It, I, I just tried to get all my spells back by using that auto full bookmark. Come on, just buttons, buttons. Two D. We can always count on you. No, jumped out of it. That's sneaky. God damn it, 5H! You have great, great, great horizontal range, but why don't you hit even slightly above you? Please, I need these conversions. You're killing me. No. Okay. Ooh. Just play patient, be lame, IAD backdash, and go into bombs. I really need that IAD backdash just to get out of there, have like a moment to breathe and see what do I have in my toolbar, how much mana do I have, and how far away is my opponent, can, can I throw anything? But hey, 
if it works, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm gonna abuse it. I'm gonna re abuse anything I can while playing this character. But hey, that was three sets that went kind of okay. And we worked our way from getting kicked out of Celestial down to level eight, back up to 10 in just those few sets. So I think it's safe to say we actually learned a bit and did a little bit better than I expected to. I was expecting to maybe get one set that went well, but yeah, like I said, maybe it's the power of talking that restricts my ability to overthink and just play lame like you're supposed to most of the time in this game. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in was whatever is next. Bye. -bye.